It was the biggest demonstration in Thailand's history and maybe in the modern world. On November 24th, 2013, over one million Thai people took to Ratchadungnon Avenue and other streets in Bangkok. On December 9, 2013, roughly five million people come out to protest nationwide. December 22, estimated more than six million people occupied the streets in the heart of Bangkok. The people came from all walks of life. They were unified under one goal, to remove the corrupt government and reform the country. They came together because they could not stand it anymore. They came to make what is right, right. They came to uproot the Thaksin regime, a regime planted by the former exile prime minister Thaksin Shanawatra that had continued to grow under the current government run by his sister Yingluck Shanawatra. Thailand is a democratic country with the king as the head of state. The governmental system is similar to that of Britain. People elect the representatives who form the parliament, and the party that wins the election chooses the prime minister, who in turn appoints the cabinet. It's been a democracy for 80 years. Despite being marked occasionally by bad politicians and coup d'etats, never before that Thailand has been divided and as corrupt as it has been during the 12-year period under Thaksin's regime. Some people think that in a democracy, if the government came from elections, it is a legitimate government. And this is what Ying Luk Shinawatra, the current Thai Prime Minister, keeps telling everyone. This way of thinking looks at things on the surface and ignores the core substance of democracy, especially in emerging countries where most people are low income and less educated. As an American writer puts, the fact that voting takes place within a country is not necessarily enough for it to be considered democratic by international standards. So what is a democratic government by international standards? The scholars define that a democratic government should have at least three core features. One, free and fair elections that are open to all citizens. This is an area in which many emerging countries seem to fall short. In Thailand, the voters in upcountry areas are honest, low income and less educated. They become victims and targets of both direct and indirect vote buying. In the rural areas, the leaders of villages or sub-villages will get money from politicians to buy votes from their villagers. Once these villagers agree with the leaders to vote for someone, they are honest or in some cases they are in fear of the leaders. They will vote for such politician and get the money. This may sound surprising for Westerners, but it is true in Thailand and probably in many other emerging countries. The Thaksin regime uses this method well and also uses populist policies to get the poor to like him, such as buying rice from farmers at the price 40 to 50 percent above world market price. It is estimated the government lost $13 billion over the last two years funding the scheme and the corruption was at every step in the program. In the election of 2007, where many political parties boycotted the election, his then party, Tyrek Tai, hired some small political parties to send candidates in in order to have the minimum number of candidates required by the law and to be their nominees. They were caught. The evidence was so clear that the court sentenced to dissolve Thai Rak Thai Party. The members of Thai Rak Thai Party then formed Peel Thai Party. Using money and the populist policies to lure the poor, they won the election and became government with Ying Luck, Thaksin's sister, as prime minister. Along with the media, which has either been bought or interfered with by the government, the people at the grassroots don't understand what's going to happen to the country. In Bangkok, though, where voters are more sophisticated, Peel Thai Party has never won an election, even the recent election of the Bangkok governor. 2. Rule of law, majority rule, and individual liberties. While democracy rests on the basic principle of majority rule, it also protects certain individual rights and liberties and prevents too much power from concentrating in any one individual or group of people. The laws and procedures must be applied equally to all citizens. 
This means having a system of checks and balances in place to prevent the abuse of power. Majority rule is necessarily limited to protect the rights of minorities. The Bill of Rights assumes this role in the United States. In Thailand, under the Thaksin regime, Thaksin appoints his relatives and close allies to be heads of many powerful organizations, including the army and the police. With the money that Thaksin regime steals from the country and the power they have, the police and the district attorney are easily on their side. The result is a police state and unjust legal procedures in which citizens are not treated equally by law enforcement. When the Peel Thai Party won the election through undemocratic methods, they owned the parliament. And as the winning party, they also became the government. There is no check and balance here. They believe they can do anything they want. They make laws for the benefit of their own group. This is what we call democratic dictatorship. They amended the Telecom Act to increase the limit of foreign shareholding in Thai telecom companies from 25% to 49%. Two days later, Thaksin sold his 48% share of the Shin Corporation, a public telecom company, to a Singaporean company for $2.5 billion, and he evaded the tax. The parliament passed an amnesty bill that allowed Thaksin, who had been a fugitive, leaving abroad to come home clean and clear of any charges, including the corruption charges of which many are still pending. During the voting to pass this bill, Peel Thai representatives cheated on the vote. They used the ID cards of the representatives who were absent to also vote to make sure the bill passed. The vote was held at 4 a.m. in the morning when few people were paying attention. This incident was taken to the Constitutional Court, which ruled that the amnesty bill was unlawful and unconstitutional. Ying Lux cabinet and Peel Thai members of parliament announced that they will not accept the ruling of the Constitutional Court. Under democratic principles and the rule of law, when a government refuses to obey the law, especially the Constitution, the government can no longer be considered a legitimate democratic government. These are just samples of the dictatorial behaviors of the current government, and they have done it to the degree that millions of Thai people are willing to take the risk of the tear gas in their lives to protest on the streets. If you still think that a government that comes to office through an election is a legitimate democratic government, then you don't know what a true democratic government is. 3. Protection of fundamental human rights. These include the right to free speech, freedom of religion, and equal protection under the law. A democracy also includes the right of all citizens to organize and participate fully in the political, economic, and cultural life of society. People have the right to demonstrate in a peaceful manner or act in non-violent civil resistance or civil disobedience. This is what the Thai people are doing right now. They have brought flowers to the police and government workers as a symbol to ask them to resist the government and turn to the people's side. But Ying Luck's government uses tear gas rubber bullets. There have even been cases of real bullets being used in order to prevent the protesters from occupying government buildings. At the recent incident of Ram Kum Hang University, the government did not respond at all, while their supporters, the red shirts, who are always violent, clashed into the student protesters. The result was four deaths, of which at least three were students, and who knows how many injuries. ที่ด้วยที่ด้วยพี่ครับมันมีกล้องวงจรปิดตรงนี้เมื่อกี้ตำรวจเดินเข้ามาเป็นแถวแล้วก็กัดกัดกล้องขึ้นพี่กัดก
พี่พี่ลงมาพี่มือมาอยู่ขาวขังขาวอยู่พี่ขังขาวอยู่พี่ขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปหน่อยขึ้นไปDuring Thaksin's administration in 2003, he has ordered heavy-handed policies for the war on drugs, resulted in the extrajudicial killing of 2,800 people within three months, including innocent children. In the 2004 Takbay incident, 78 Thai Muslim civilians who were detained and transported after a protest against Thaksin's policy died from suffocation after being handcuffed and stacked on top of each other for over three hours and 32 Thai Muslims were killed in cross cell incidents. The Thaksin regime and Yingluck's government are nothing but a democratic dictatorship who live off a corrupt system, corrupt policies that reach deep and wide into Thai culture. They are the only group of people who gets richer and richer, while the people are suffering and the country is collapsing. A recent poll shows that the young Thai generation feels that corruption is okay if that they also get benefits from it. This truth hurts Thailand's dignity and the Thai people. It is time for this to end. Thailand needs to reset and reform. Democratic dictatorship occurs around the world, in the Philippines, Indonesia, many years ago, in Central America countries, in European countries, and in the Middle East uprising recently. We hope that through the social media and internet era, all of us can learn from the loss of other countries and decide to do something for your own country and prevent this to happen to your people. Democracy may be the best choice available, but it also allows dictatorship and tyrants to parasite. At the time we produce this video, we don't know how Thailand will turn out, how peaceful protest can overthrow the shameless government. We fully support the bravery type people who come out to fight for their freedom and protect their beloved king. Thailand needs a reform not just another election.